So, um, continuing on with my series about uh, switching logic and relay logic circuits, um, I thought I'd um, try and demonstrate how you can build a synchronous binary counter. Um, now, this is making use of the uh, D-type synchronous um, flip-flop that I had described in a previous video, so um, you might want to watch that first if you've uh, not seen it already, you're not going to understand any of this really. So um, the way that the binary counter works um, is that um, you have a series of uh, bits and when a, all the bits that are less significant than the current one is uh, are one, then that causes a flip of the of the of the of this particular digit. So this circuit. Um, so what I'm showing you here, um, these boxes represent that entire circuit of the. Uh, a free relay D type flip flop that I've talked about before. And so I have three of them here representing um, three digits, and this is the uh, least significant bit. Um, and these uh, circuits have um, a clock input, which is edge triggered, and also a D and D inverse input, which, uh, need to, um, which are used to set and reset the flip flop. Um, as you can see here, all of the clock inputs have been tied um, together and they go to um, the push button here connected to positive, which is uh, just used to clock them all simultaneously. Now, um, inside this, um, each one of these boxes is effectively a circuit containing um, three relays, but the actual output relay, I'm just drawing the contacts for that here. So there's the normally closed, uh, sorry, normally open contact and then normally closed contact on the other side. So. The circuit um, has a enable input, so uh, what we want to do is uh, have a switch to enable it to count or not count. So, um, so I'll draw that over here. Um, this is going to be coming from outside the circuit, uh, so um, that's going to ground. And um, so when the switch is up, that's we want it to count, enable the count. So let's and let's call this F for flip, um, and then. Um, the, when it's down, it's, we, uh, we want to disable the count, so I'm going to call this NF for, for no flip. So what that's going to do is we, we, we want to be able to send that into the least significant bit and have that bit flip over if, um, the F, if it's connected to F and not to change when the clock comes along if it's uh, connected to NF. Uh, so the way we do that is to just connect it through here. Um, and then if the first digit relay is um, energized, we want that flip input to um, allow it to um, clear that first digit by connecting to the D. Um, now I'm going to do that by using some diodes here, um, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, so that's one connection, and then the other one is from D to here. So that means that if F is connected, then it will always cause the least significant bit to um, toggle over. If it was if it was on, then it's going to get turned off through that diode, and if it was off, then it's going to get turned on through that the other diode. However, um, if we want it to ignore the count pulses, the clock pulses coming along, um, we have to use the no flip line to um, generate the opposite signal, the input to that um, bit. Um, so I'll put another two diodes in here. Um, now if it's pulled in through here, uh, we want it to stay pulled in. So um, I'm going to connect this up here to the D input. So that's going to energize that uh, if it's already energized after the next clock cycle. And um, then I'm going to do the same with the other one to, to de-energize it. So. That's the least significant bit done, and also um, it will count or not count depending on the state of this switch on the right hand side. So now we want to kind of cascade this on to the next digit. So um, it turns out that um, we want the next digit to flip if all the previous digits before um, are, are set or equal to 1. Um, so that's like we're generating a new F signal for the next digit. So that happens to be that it's the and anding together of all the previous digits. So, um, so this, so we're going to and this for input switch, and we're going to and it with this uh, this digit. So that when that's on it connected to F and that's on one, then we want to energize this F line here. So this is the new F line coming in, 
And so we do the same thing over here that we did before. So uh, add some diodes in here. Um, Um, and so we need to also add these diodes to uh, for the no change condition. So I'm going to use the second one to um, indicate no change. Um, so that's going to come in like this. So this um, this no, no change relay contact that actually has to um, have an, its own NF contact, NF signal coming to it. Now, the trouble is there's not like a really obvious way to generate that, um, but it turns out that the, the best way to do it is we, we, need, we need to actually use a, a diode OR in here. So what we do is we take um, the NF line coming in here and we OR it with uh, the, this line here. So that's basically saying that this this next digit is not is 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 not going to flip if either you're telling the counter that it doesn't it shouldn't flip at all, or it, you are telling the counter that it's going to flip, but the previous digit was uh, zero, so it's not going to carry over after the next count. So we repeat the same thing again over here. Um, I can draw in all these diodes, but uh, really quick. Not all these diodes are strictly necessary, it just depends on exactly how you have the rest of the circuit hooked up. So we need to generate the F line here, so once again we carry it over from here, so that's uh, so that only if all the previous um, digits and the enable input are all uh, are all connect are all on, then do we actually allow the, that bit to flip? And then we actually have to generate the NF input here again. And that actually, um, the best way of looking at it is to say that it's going to come from just the previous stage. We don't want to have to worry about everything that went before. So, uh, so we we put an OR in here from this NF. So, basically, if the previous stage is not flipping, then we definitely aren't going to flip. But we also want to say that if that previous stage is flipping, um, then we are going to flip this, this, this most significant bit. So that means that we need this extra diode in here, just like we did before, um, that goes up to this contact here, which says we are flipping and this... Um, Middle di middle bit is like is turned off, so you can see how you can keep cascading these stages, and um, you end up with a binary counter. Now the only issue with this is um, that um, if you have a lot more stages, then you have a whole series of diodes wired together, and then there's a voltage drop associated with each one. So there's a limit depending on like um, how how uh, high your supply voltage is and what your relays, uh, how you how, what kind of relays you're using exactly, and then if you have too many bits then you're going to have to put a repeater relay in there which would actually just um, um, repeat the uh, signal without um, and getting rid of the, get, get, getting rid of this diode problem and then of course you can have additional contacts on these relays to um, be used to send your um, output for to some other location the least significant bit to the most significant bit so that's how you do a synchronous relay based binary counter and um, in this case the relay th this counter is using um, nine relays for a three bit counter and it will change consistently exactly at the instant that you uh, press the button for the clock line.